The Russian troop group in the Seam River area of the Kursk region has no chance of holding this territory, Ukrainian military expert Pavel Narozny said on air at Radio NV. Our aviation and artillery are working very closely there. All the residents of Sumy write about the planes that are constantly moving towards the Kursk region. I think that this group has two options, either to swim across the river, which is technically possible. The Seam is a small river, not the Dnieper. Or to surrender. And this situation, it completely closes the flank. And this means that our group, which is in the Kursk region, it plans to hold out there for a long time, said Narozny. At the same time, he added that the Russian command is not ignoring the situation in the Kursk region and has already transferred there those troops that were supposed to be sent to the Pokrovsk direction. These are, of course, not very combat-ready units. However, they are standing, digging in and holding back the further advance of Ukrainian troops. It cannot be said that we are continuing the pressure there. However, even in the last two to three days, there has been progress. And if these units were not in the Kursk region, they would be either in Kharkiv region or in the Pokrovsk direction, added Narozny. According to him, most of the assault operations are currently taking place in the Pokrovsky direction, since the Russian Federation cannot yet conduct active combat operations in several places at the same time. Their peak of capability has already passed and it will continue to decrease. And the equipment and the number of people, it is also not easy to constantly replenish. The Kursk operation is already making its mark. The enemy does not have the resources to attack, to conduct a dense attack, which he is conducting in Pokrovsk in several directions. Our general staff reported three attempts to storm the Volchansk direction, but I am more than sure that they have been repelled and that we will counter-attack there. After all, the enemy has thrown back all, more or less, combat-ready units to the Kursk direction from Kharkov. Therefore, the fact that they are cutting the territory there, recapturing something, this is an absolutely logical step. Narozny explained. The Ukrainian occupation of the town of Sudza in the Kursk region looks like an ominous boomerang of Putin's propaganda. While the Kremlin claims that it is returning originally Russian lands, the Ukrainian armed forces have taken control of a city that was once Ukrainian and was only fully Russified in the 20th century, writes The Guardian. Popular blogger and historian Evgeny Murza came to Sudza to film the next episode of his historical and humorous program on the spot. Telling his subscribers about the Ukrainian roots of Sudza, Murza notes that at the beginning of the 20th century, 61% of Sudza residents spoke Ukrainian. This excursion into history is not needed to advance Ukrainian claims to Sudza, but to show how absurd and hypocritical are Russian claims to part of Ukrainian territory. They always talk about Crimea or other places that they say were cut off from Russia during the Soviet era and added to Ukraine, but they never talk about the places that were taken from Ukraine and added to Russia, Moza told The Guardian. In Sudza, as in most of the Russian territories bordering Ukraine, many older people still speak Ukrainian or a mixture of the two languages known as Suzik. I think the old people I met there probably spoke better Ukrainian than I did, said one soldier from a Russian-speaking family in eastern Ukraine who patrolled the streets of Sudza. Many families are scattered on both sides of the border, which has caused them trouble in recent years. Nadezda, who asked that her last name not be used, was born in Sudza and lived there until she was 18, but then moved to the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv to attend university and stayed there. Before the full-scale invasion in 2022, she returned to Sudza every year, where she would argue with her mother and brother, both ardent Putin fans. After 2022, the relationship broke down completely. At first, they kept saying all this, that we were shooting at ourselves. After a while, we just stopped communicating, the woman said. When the Ukrainians occupied Sudza, her mother and brother fled to Kursk, where they are now in temporary housing, and again got in touch with Nadezda. My mother said that after the Kursk operation, many people changed their minds. On television, everything was optimistic and now they have lost their homes. I said, Mom, from the first day of the war, I try to tell you that war is pain. It is terrible. It is not about cheerful war songs. Now I think they understand a little, but I do not believe that they will ever fully understand what their state and their people have done, says the Kharkov resident. 
Nadezda said that her mother grew up speaking Ukrainian, but now speaks mostly Russian. Among the younger generation in Sudza, almost no one speaks Ukrainian. According to Murza, this trend, as well as the fact that the Sudza Museum says nothing about the city's Ukrainian past, should serve as a warning about what could happen to other areas that are now being russified. Look at what is happening in the occupied territories of Ukraine, where propaganda tells people that they are all Russian and everything Ukrainian is artificial. In a few decades, this will all become deeper. It will be like Sudza and no one will remember anything, the historian warns.